What's going on, football fans? It's me, J.R. Clark, back again with another Pound for Pound ATL. Joined, as always, by my co-host, Jonathan Holder. Jonathan, what's going on, brother? Man, I am looking forward to the new kickoffs. That's oh, yeah. I say. Looking forward to them. Yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Like, uh, uh, what we're referring to, obviously, for anybody who uh, hasn't been on social media today, uh, hadn't been on any of your, your Twitters or whatnot, is um, today down at the league meeting, the owners meeting, uh, they passed a new kickoff rule. And if any of you have watched the XFL last week, and I'll, and as we get into like dive into a little bit deeper here in a minute, I'll show a video, but um, like it's going to really resemble the XFL's kickoff, which when the XFL put that in, like it was made, the statement was made that they were testing this stuff out um, to, you know, see the, um, what it would look like for the NFL. Uh, Nighthawk, you have not missed the intro music. Uh, nope. We're, we're going to get to that here in a second. This is that this is that cold open. I, 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 jumped the, I, I jumped the gun a little bit. He did. He did. He jumped the gun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, this uh, it's called a cold open, and then we'll hit the intro, and then we'll get into it. So I guess without further ado, we might as well just get into it. And you're not wrong, Charles Nash. This is the new draft hat. Eh? Eh? This is the oh. first. I, I'm, <laughs> I, we were talking before the before the show started. Uh, this is the first year. And I'm I'm probably still not going to get one, uh, but because uh, I, I don't know, I just don't. But uh, this is the first year in uh, that I that I can remember that I legitimately like the designs for the new hats because they're. I'm I'm a more basic person. I don't right. like you've it always with a been, whole bunch of stuff all over yeah, my hat. I, I was about to say you've always been more of like what I would call like a traditionalist, um, you know, simplistic designs, that's, things like that. That that's why personally the current I know a lot of people are gonna say uh, are gonna give me a lot of pushback on this, but right now, personally, I much, 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 much prefer the current jerseys to the previous jerseys or even the ones before that, because it's very much more simplified. They're, yeah, it's it's a so- simplistic. Um, now there's some aspects like if we want to like deviate on some jersey talk for just a minute. Um, I would love a red helmet with this logo. I know everybody loves a red helmet with a throwback logo. I myself am not a huge fan of the throwback logo. I think this is a better logo. But I would love, like I still love the throwback uniforms. Like when they do the whole you know, throwbacks once or twice a year. Yep. But I would love to have an alternate helmet that was a red helmet with the uh, I'm, new I'm, modern Falcons logo on it. I'm telling you right now, man, if you take the, uh, if you take the, the, the current throwback jerseys, leave everything about them exactly the same, same red helmets, same jerseys, same everything. And literally just changed the classic logo to the new logo and said, "Hey, there's our new uniforms." Oh, dude, I would be I would be the happiest man in the state of Georgia. Yeah, no, I, I would be I would be ecstatic. I mean, honestly, I would be ecstatic. Um, <laughs> Alberto likes how I've used my stadium cup. It's my pencil holder, man. Yeah. You know, anyway, That's the way to do it. That's right. That's right. Um, Chris says, uh, "Good afternoon, all. Do you think the Falcons had a good idea this new?" Kickoff rule will be put in place, uh, so the signing of Ray Ray makes even more sense. Uh, you know what? I'll tell you this, and then y'all are going, y'all are going to scoff at me. Y'all going to do whatever. You're going to roll your eyes, but of course they had that insight. Rich McKay is the CEO yeah. or CFO or whatever his title is now. That's like one of the main reasons why Martha Blank has even stated that he that Rich McKay he values his input because of you know, his connections in the rest of the league, AKA the competition committee. Like he chairs up the competition committee. So yeah. Um, not only did I think, um, Zach Robinson wanted more speed, um, you know, these last few years they were trying to play bully ball and didn't really have anybody who could consistently, take the top off well it's also because yeah. you didn't have anybody who could consistently get them the ball 
to take yeah. the top off. So we'll, we'll just leave it at that. But, um, you know, yeah, of course they, they knew that this was coming because it had been talked about for a while, really. Yeah. So and, and uh, speaking we, of that, we, go ahead. We've been here, we, we heard about this like uh, in the last weeks of the season last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, yep. You started hearing people talk about uh, – uh, you know, people who, uh, you know, or even uh, last year uh, when they saw the new uh, kickoff with the XFL, you started hearing a lot of people be like, man, I would really love for this to be in the, the NFL because it's, you know, you get more excitement that, you know, it yeah. brings, it brings like the kickoff means something. Yep. Now. Yep. Right. Okay. And so what we're talking about, all right, here we go. This is, this is a clip. It's kind of grainy. So, I didn't have the time nor the effort uh, put into it to go find a really crisp video, but this will give you an idea. You got the two starting lines, right? This is the kicking team, the receiving team, right? And they're starting. The kicking team is on the receiving team's 35 yard line, right? Kicker still sets up at the same spot as he always does. And then you have, the return guys back up here. We'll see here in a second. So you kick the ball, maybe. Okay. So here's the here's the difference. You can't move until this ball gets into the target zone. Okay. Yep. The target zone, if I'm understanding it right, is the twenty back. Okay. Well, 20, twenty to the goal line to the out to the twenty. Out, yeah, goal line out to the twenty. That's the target zone. So if you if you got some strategy and you want to kick it, try to cough and nail it over here, right? Like they can't, nobody moves until that ball enters the target zone. Or until he catches it uh, in the target zone. Right. So then now he's got all this space to get up to speed before, you know, coming in contact. So, and then now you, like, you can block it up different. So that was one of them. I'm going to see if I can find this other one. That was a really good one. So we keep talking about this while I look for but, it. But, yeah, so, like, and we'll see it again if he can find the the, the uh, thing he's wanting to find. But uh, if you, I, there's a, there's two different ways of kicking into the into the end zone. Uh, and it and it changes where that ball comes out depending on how it's kicked into the end zone. Uh, if it's kicked and lands in the target zone, so between the goal line and the 20, and then rolls into the end zone, I think that comes out to the 25. I believe um, so. And then, but if they kick it and it, uh, the ball lands, either hits the end zone or the guy catches it in the end zone, uh, then at that point, I think it comes out to the 35. Uh, and if you don't kick it far enough, so it bounces and hits bef- uh, before the 20 yard line, I think it comes out to like the 40 uh, or something like that. I'll find, uh, I want to show you this one other play and then I'm going to, I'll pull up like the full like rule set and we'll, and we'll talk about what it is. All right, let's see here. I'm going to make this bigger. Okay. So here's where it could get interesting if you want to get creative, right? And if you want to have some fun. So this is from the Battle Hawks game last year, I believe it was. So let's see. All right. And at some point in time, it is prob- possibly going to start playing. Maybe. You got to be kidding me. Come on now. What's the problem? Stupid Twitter and its playback. Come on, Elon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. Okay. Anyway, what they did was they, they basically did like an end around or, you know, and uh, one guy caught it, was running running this way and then flipped it to the other guy. So there was like some trickery, which you don't ever get to see on um, on a kickoff. Yep. And you see so you see so many people. Uh, I see so many people on Twitter, uh, you know, or, or in, and in other places that but specifically Twitter that they talk about the new uh, football, you know, the new kickoff rule, uh, how, you know, what do you think? And then people under there are like, it's going to be flag football. It's going to, you know, Devin Hester, you know, this, you know, he, he's, there's never going to be another guy like him again. Uh, and, and my thing was like, 
this new rule like increases the chances that you're going to see great kickoffs again. Uh, right, because right now for turners again. Like I'll, I'll put it like this, like straight up and down. These last few years, like kickoff has been unwatchable. Like it, it, that was the time you got up and left because there wasn't nothing happening. Yeah. Okay, so here's the full like rules. Um, so it says, okay, landing zone is the area between the team's goal line and the twenty. Any kick that hits short of the landing zone, uh, treated like a kickoff out of bounds, and the ball will be spotted at the forty. Yep. Uh, play would be blown dead as soon as the kick lands short of the landing zone. Uh, any kick that hits the landing zone must be returned. So there's no more you. You ain't fair catching it. Yeah. No. Okay. So it must be returned. Any kick that hits the landing zone and then goes into the end zone must be returned or downed by the receiving team. If it's downed, then a touchback's at the 20 yard now. So that's, a, so that's actually a penalty on the receiving team. Right. Because in the, in the past, that would have been out to the 25. Correct. Uh, so now it's like, hey, you had the opportunity to go catch it. You let it go into the end zone, uh-huh. and, then you, and then you didn't even try to return it. You just downed it in the end zone. So we're just going to we're going to you get yeah you're 20. down at the twenty five or at the twenty. Yep. Um, kicking uh kick hits the end zone, stays in bounds, returned or down. If the if downed, then the touchback to the thirty yard line. Um. So I guess if you get it and then down it, you go to the thirty. If you catch it in the end zone or it hits, bounces around, you grab it, then down it, then, then it uh, goes the, to the 30. Th- then it goes to the 30. So you get it, uh, you get a little bit of a bonus on top of the old one because the kicking team kicked it into the end zone. Right. Didn't, uh, it, it wasn't like the, the receiving team let it get to the end zone. Any kick that goes out of the back of the end zone in the air or bounces, touch back to the 30. So, yeah. What they're trying to do here is they they are in they are wanting you to return the ball. They're wanting yes. you to catch it and run with it, um, like because now these kickers are going to be trying to drop it at the one, you know, and and not have it bounce or whatever, you know, uh, to go through the back of the end zone because they don't want to take it out to the thirty, giving it an extra. Okay, so miscellaneous, no fair catch, uh, no fair catch or signals allowed. Official will blow, blow, blow it dead. If conditions cause the ball to fall off the tee twice, I ain't worried about that. Oh, uh, be, so, so here, the, there's a difference. So in the past, uh, if the cause the ball to fall off the tee twice, then the kicker uh, will be allowed to use a kicking stick to keep the ball in place. Uh, but used before to be, somebody would have, You had to have a return player come, come out. over and hold it. Right. Um. Okay. Onside kick. Now, this is a new, like, okay, fourth quarter begins. The team trailing has the opportunity to declare an onside kick to the officials. Current onside kick rules would apply if onside kick goes beyond the setup zone untouched, the kicking team penalized. So they're changing the onside kick as well. Um which I found, I thought that would be, so I don't think there's going to be any more like surprise onside kicks. No, because you can't. Yeah, you can't surprise onside kick because of how it's, all right. Um, penalties. I don't really care about penalties. I don't know. Do we care about penalties? Uh, the setup zone and landing zone will not change with any penalties that carry over to kickoffs. Alignment of 10 kickoff team players and in all receiving team players would would not change only the spot yeah this is like tedious stuff there yeah okay so that's the that's the the kickoff which i think will at least make it fun and interesting i enjoyed the the kickoffs when i watched the xfl which by the way that's starting this weekend for any of you uh like psychotic football fans out there like myself who just want to watch football uh the new ufl will be kicking up here soon uh this weekend uh, uh this weekend yeah i saw that uh so i'm gonna i'm gonna try to make sure that i try to catch some of those uh there's only like four games uh but uh i want to see if i can catch 
uh, but they, they all seem to be on uh, radio, but not TV. They should be. I think they're. Oh no, there. never mind, never mind. Uh, oh, I was about to say there's, there's yeah, there's two on Fox on Saturday. So it looks mm-hmm. like Fox has the Saturday games. Uh, then, ESPN has the Sunday games. Right. So for any of you football degenerates, <clears throat> uh, <laughs> King Seven says, um, if the returner don't know his stuff, it's going to be a long day for that team. Uh, yeah, and also like this gives, this is going to even more separate like good special team coordinators. We all time talk about, you know, offensive coordinators and defensive coordinators. Very rarely um, do we ever even talk about or mention special teams coordinators. And, you know, in the heyday of the Patriots, like they, their special teams stole them some possessions a handful of times throughout the year, uh, which really helped them win some games. So if you can get you a really good, special teams coordinator especially now who actually has some creativity um he might be able to you know get you a touchdown or possessions or like because now you can really do some scheming you know on how you want that return to to take place well and, and like like you said uh since the rules changes uh since the previous rule change changes have gone into effect like there was no it, – it, having a guy who was like your specialist kickoff return guy was almost a non-factor. Yeah, you get a guy to return one every now and then, but it wasn't, in most cases, worth the risk. Like if, it, right. if, you, caught, if you caught it in the end zone, which is where most of those kicks were going if they weren't even going out of the end zone, uh, if you were even – uh, if you were grabbing it, you were probably five to six yards deep in the end zone. So to even make it worthwhile, you're talking, you got to make up 30 yards. Right. Uh, you know, and a lot of times guys were not getting back to the 25. So, you know, unless you had a guy that, that was really good back there and, and the guys that were really good back there, a lot of times were very specialized guys that, yeah, they could. They would play on offense, but they weren't like huge contributors on offense. They, but they were the guys that you got because of the kickoff. Mm-hmm. I was trying but to that, find. That was essentially just becoming a, a thing. Like, why do we even have a guy for kickoffs in this scenario? I was trying to find like it was Warren Sharp, who is like a <coughs> uh, stats savant kind of guy. Here we go. In 2023. It was a 73% touchback rate, uh, by far the highest it had ever been. Mm-hmm. So 73% of the kickoffs were going for touchbacks. Uh, four kickoffs returned for touchdown, fewest since at least 2000. So that's 24 years. of, yep. And then let's see, 41 onside kicks, fewest since at least 2000. And he goes on to say something needed to be done. Right, and this is, you know, what they attempted to try to get done was um, to try to put some more excitement while also feeling like they are keeping like it safer, and which now kind of transitions into the other new rule that they put in place, which was the they're trying to ban the hip drop, uh, hip drop tackle. Well, they're not trying to. Well, they uh, yeah, they banned they, they it. They did. <laughs> right, right. Well, they're trying to get it out of the game, right? Yes. So I'm just trying to see if I can find the wording on that. See if I can get that pulled up. But because uh, uh, the way they described it, it this sounds like a lot of people made it sound like it was one of those things that – it wasn't going to be enforced as much as, uh, you know, as much as some people thought it might be. I think it's it's probably going to be a situation where if it's flagrant, like really, really, really apparent, right? Then it's probably going to get called. Uh, if it's if the my guess would be if the uh, they tell the 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 refs like. If you are not a hundred percent sure, then don't throw the flag, and we'll just do it on the back end with fines and what have you. 
Right. Uh, which if they can keep it to that, that's cool. Uh, and and I, what I will say is what they should be doing uh, and what I would be doing if I was uh, a football coach is I would be showing them nonstop. And I'm not saying you don't have bad tackles there either. You do, but you also have uh, generally much better form tackling and just have them go watch a bunch of rugby. Like, yeah. Tackle, tackle like these guys and yeah, you may give up an extra yard or whatever, but you're also uh, playing a safer sport or say a safer brand of the sport. Uh, and you're probably much more sure tackling if mm-hmm. you're doing it, uh, you know, like, because Pete Carroll, that was one of the things that really helped the Legion of boom was they, they, they preached that style of tackling. That, yeah. That, that rugby, rugby style. Yep. Uh, I'm trying to like, I don't see any kind of like verbiage ruling. Oh, here we go. Is this it? A knee. Okay. The league has defined a hip drop tackle as using the following technique to bring a player to the ground. Grabs a runner with both hands and wraps, uh, unweights himself by swiveling and dropping his hips or lower body, landing on the trapping the runner. This is the big part that I don't think a lot of, like social media and Twitter and all that jazz is, is keying in on trapping the runner's legs at or below the knee. Because that's the, the part that, that I think that they're trying to really get out is you saw it last year with Mark Andrews and the Ravens um, where they basically like shattered his ankle and yeah. the same deal. Like, uh, Kenyon Drake uh, said, he's like, he goes, I know it ain't a popular opinion. I'm trying to see if I can get his, uh, I should have had all this stuff like keyed up, but I did not. Uh, I mean, we're professionals here, so we're doing it professionally. That's right. Let's see. Hip drop tackle. Let's just research it. Uh, Fred Butts, we appreciate you greatly. He says, um, Thank you, Mr. Butts. He said, that's a great band. Don't want to see like legs broke. And that's what they're, I know it's not popular. We it all, it automatically brings up the whole, are we just playing, you know, flag football and I get it. Um, but that's just like, there's certain techniques that you just don't want to, don't want to encourage. Yeah. Here's Kenyon Drake's uh, tweet. He says, I don't care about popular opinion i lost my right ankle in a quarter of the 21 season to this type of tackle uh something had to give and i'm glad it's not anybody's legs or ankles anymore um because that was something that had popped up in the last few years you know you're watching defenders like fully just drop dead weight trying to pull these guys down Uh, i mean you saw it with okay here's a here's a good analogy here's a good example for you horse collar yeah did that did flagging horse collars ruin the game of football? No. Right. I mean, so with that being said, uh yeah, Chris has a good point. He says there's only like 18 incidents of swivel hip drop tackles in 23, um, but over 50% led to injuries. Well, but they what they so, here's what I here's what I heard was uh I was watching a video about this uh, and they were saying something like uh, in 2023, they saw like these crazy percentages uh, increase year over year from 2022 uh, with that particular type of tackle. And they were seeing like one per game. Right. Uh, You know, so it's this, you know, now if, if you're saying 18 of them, in 2023 there then we're talking at least one every week but but the, the way they were saying it in there i guess maybe the way they categorize that particular type of technique well see they were saying one per game which was a, a apparently a much bigger uh per, it was the percentage over the year previous was pretty high right now like, here's one of the like the deals right is like how someone's supposed to tackle you know Kyle or uh drake without going low it's not a it's not to prevent you from going low it's it's directly to uh are you pulling up an example of it i'm I'm gonna see if i can find it but okay uh, if if you can i will um 
So King says it's uh it's football, the part of making millions on millions. How's a defensive player supposed to tackle? Because now they're going to make it to where the defensive player gets hurt. That's the part where I uh, that's there's a part of that that I I agree with with you there, King. It is making it harder on the defensive defenseless or defensive player uh, because now you're talking about a strike zone that they have to hit so that they don't get fined. And it's going to be a little like a little herky jerky to begin with. But as you get used to teaching it and as they get used to doing it, it shouldn't take these guys long to um, incorporate it and make it a part of their game. But yes, it, there is a uh, a deal where you know h- how are these guys supposed to do their job, right? Um, let's see, do you got one yet? Because I've I no, got... I can't find it. Okay, let's see if let's see if Twitter will be nice to me today, or not nice to me on this video. Just okay. scroll, see if maybe it just happens okay. to pop up. So this is this is the Mark Andrews one. See. You see how when he went down, let's back it up some, he kind of wrapped his legs around him. See, that's what they're trying to get out of there. And so when he goes down, then you end up sandwiching legs. So let's see if we can, it'll show it better here. So this is what they're trying to get rid of. He grabs him, drops down, and then boom, pins his, his knees and stuff under him. That's what they're trying to remove. Yeah, and we and we've seen that a bunch of times. Whether it's this one or I've seen I've noticed this uh, a trend like this over probably the past I don't know three four years where you start to see a bunch more of this kind of tackling uh, happen, especially when it's talking about like uh, like uh, cornerbacks going up against tight ends. Uh, trying to like use their weight, like leverage the what weight they do have, and use it use it to try to bring guys down. Uh, and I've seen quite a few injuries pop up because, like, nine times out of ten, if I see an injury, it was a lot of times because of a tackle like this. King also like I get I get what you're saying here. He's like, yeah, but as a smaller player, usually tackling a way bigger player. Uh, so how does the smaller guys choose to tackle someone? of that size it's insane it definitely puts the defensive player in a bind but i will say this they haven't always tackled like this yeah right and so if they haven't always tackled like this that means this is a new technique that they have learned right so in that case if this is a new technique they have learned it's a new technique that we can unlearn and we can figure out some other way to do it you know um, I mean, yeah. also at the end of the day, we all know as much as like the defensive guys are, you know, you know, the guys who play defense or, uh, you know, guys like Damsky who are, you know, defensive by nature, as far as like football is concerned, it sucks for those guys. And what I mean by that is like, it's always going to be harder on y'all because they just like this, <laughs> just like the steroid era in baseball home run sales points sell they want you know they want points they want it to be fun for the uh you know for fans to enjoy that's part of the business that's part of marketing as much as it annoys everybody but they also don't want an instance where especially now with more running quarterbacks across the entire league they they don't want your you know your your uh guys to get took out you know what i'm saying what you got there so so i got a couple of examples so uh let me pause that real quick bring this up or do you guys uh can you guys see this okay yeah yeah we we can okay uh all right so you'll see it here to say so this guy right here he weighs something like uh 200 ish pounds the guy that's going to tackle him is 167 pounds. So giving 40, up 40 pounds uh, difference there, you know, 40, you know, 35, 40 pounds difference. Uh, and this guy is rumbling, stumbling. And then this guy's coming in at an angle in the NFL, like tackle right here. Most likely with this size difference, you're going to see the defender grab him around the waist, 
just dead weight drop, and then it be just because of the, the you know the momentum. The momentum. His body, his body's going to swing around and take out the guy's legs, uh, and that's when you get the the problem that we're running into now. This right. guy, he just you know gra- he just grabs him, and then uh, instead of uh, like he basically like drags his body, like lets his body just kind of go uh, go forward with the momentum. Right, you should be able uh, to see a better angle here, probably. Yeah. See now he doesn't lay, you know, his his body is in front of this guy. Uh it's or to the side at the very least. Uh or you know, at the very best. And so he but he's still able to bring him down. Uh because at the end of the day, how you know the one of the things we've talked about is how do you bring down a bigger guy when you're a smaller guy like that? It doesn't matter how big you are, how strong you are. If you can't move your, if you're moving like that, and then all of a sudden there's an obstruction to your legs, uh, and your legs can't work like they're supposed to at that speed, you're going to go down. Right. So it doesn't take you having to take out. They essentially do a, uh, oh, what, uh, what's that called? Uh, the old, uh, where uh, we you see it in wrestling all the time, where the guy would do the the tackle into the back of the knee. Oh. Uh Crap! What is that called? Chop, like a chop, uh, no, a chop block, or no, it's, no, chop yeah, block. but it's, it's it's called something else. I can't remember, but uh, but you know that that's outlawed. You can't do that in the NFL, right? You know, and uh, uh, but that's essentially what you're doing with the hip drop tackle is, but you're doing it with your whole body. Mm-hmm. Uh, you're 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 hitting the back of the legs, uh, which causes them to buckle, and then that everything gets stuck up underneath your body. Uh, Nighthawk said the figure four. <laughs> no sharpshooter, man. <laughs> the scorpion uh, deathlock, baby. Come on now. Scorpion Short, deathlock. No. <laughs> Don't nobody like Bret Hart. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, but but anyway, uh, dang, I cannot believe that. I, like, I, I would have known this like literally ten minutes ago. Uh, but anyway, so that's one example. Uh, another one I want to show you is, I believe it's this guy right here. So again. What we have here is we have this guy. He's a pretty big dude. You'll see him. Uh, maybe. Yeah, I think Twitter does not like the streaming, like playing a video while you're streaming, because that's exactly what it was doing on my end. Uh, that crap. Well, here's another one. So this guy right here, boom. What did he do? He went down and wrapped, wrapped his legs up. Boom. There you yeah, go. but see... With that, they did that for a while, and who was it? Uh, Glenn up here saying that he's going to be drafting Bijan, a bunch of Bijan in Dynasty, because of this rule now. <laughs> you know, because guys like Bijan, that's that's how they made their money, right? It was, um, you know, being able to yeah, uh, get out of those like leg arm, just the arms at the legs kind of deal. But that's where you know contact balance and all that becomes like super important. But again. They the NFL hadn't always defenders haven't always dropped their body weight like that. That's yep. a relatively new uh you know technique. So these guys will they'll just have to adjust. And it sucks that it's yep. almost always the defense that has to adjust. Uh yep. but a few few years back you had um the helmet to helmet, and that was generally that was like a running back thing, you yep. know. Because I'm like you, can, the, you like apparently uh, only within certain places can you do it now, right? Uh, like lower the helmet down like mm-hmm. that. Uh, once you're like out on the side, you know the wings and uh, you're out jazz, kind of free you space, you can't do that anymore. So right, uh, Charleston says, "Have we listened to Raheem speak earlier today?" I, I haven't like listened to it, but I've seen. Um, you know, clips and we're going to, that's something that we are obviously going to be uh, talking about today. So let's get to some of those comments. Let me get that pulled up. Cause Raheem there, had there, some good, good there was, stuff. There was, yeah. there was one more rule that I'm trying to remember uh, that, that made that, that got some uh, talk about today. I'm trying to remember. One of the was. things was like being able to, have the sky judge call down on like, yes, uh, that, like that's it. The roughing, roughing the passer. A, yeah, roughing a passer and intentional grounding was the two that I was 
uh, thinking about. And I thought that that was, I was like, good, finally. Like, yeah. we have that technology. Why are we not using it to its fullest extent? I understand that you want to keep your, um, you know, the human element of the game. But, my God, just like in baseball, we have the ability to accurately call balls and strikes every time. You know, so why are we not using it? Why are we just not getting it right? You know, and yeah. I, and I think that's the same uh, deal here. I also um, think uh, with the new hip drop stuff, if you're if you really want to uh, kind of push that uh, as like that is not the way we want our guys tackling, uh, it's fine. Like if you know, you know, if you get a guy that does that kind of tackle, but if you see uh, either him or just the team in general have a, a consistent. You know, consistently they're 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 the ones that are getting flagged for this. Uh, there may need to be like penalties for like the team, like the organization. Like, hey, you're supposed to be you know coaching these guys to not do this. We're seeing this over and over and over again. This is a a problem with the way you guys are coaching. So, you know, we need you need to be held accountable as well. It can't just mm-hmm. be the players. Uh, I think that's that would be the best way to kind of really hit the you know hit you know hit that home. Uh, and another like, thing that they could really do, and, and Millie's kind of hitting it here, and you're talking about it as well. Is like he says at the end of the day, the refs are going to call whatever they want to call at whatever time they want to call it. Does it really matter? He says it's going to cost the team a playoff win, and people are going to cry again. People are going to cry the, about everything. But I'll say this: you could stop some of that crying. It's at least from the fans' perspective, if you would at least publicly like say, "Hey, we have fined this ref this amount of money," or what have you. Like if if we knew that there was some, and you get it every now and again, hey, this team isn't going to be calling playoffs. Like this this ref squad isn't going to be doing playoffs or what have you. But if they came out like on Mondays or let's say Tuesdays. If they came out on Tuesdays and was like, oh, yeah, this, you know, had like public demerits or whatever for the refs uh, because of screw ups, I think that that would help, in my opinion. I mean, maybe, maybe but, but the, the, at least the, maybe, maybe to me. I don't know. The problem is, is like they don't necessarily uh, find them and suspend them. Like, if you get, like, say you get three mistakes, you know, after your third like major mistake or whatever you like your flag like we could do flagrants on the refs right like you're like a fragrant one i don't know what the the rep the worst one is for an nba but if if they had like a varying degree of your third technical you know you're suspended a game or something um that might at least acknowledge that the refs make mistakes in a sense yeah, um, but but also I, I don't I don't know. Like I said, it's just one of those situations where uh, I really think what they need to do with all the billions they're making yeah. is invest in. Uh, let, let's get um, essentially uh, like a refing university uh, and full time refs. Give them yeah. a. Uh, give them a path and then uh, make that path available, which it should, it would be anyways. I don't, I'm not, this is not like any grand thought here, but make you know, make that available to uh, former players, you know, who have played the game and uh, understand the, 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 you know, the situations and right. things like that a little bit better than say a guy who uh, a lawyer may, maybe played be- uh, football in college, maybe uh, as late as high school and that's about it right. you know uh, but then has been an accountant a lawyer or whatever and that's their life outside of football like you know make it so that guys who uh maybe are just not quite good enough to make it to the nfl but they got they were able to play they in college yeah, no, the, there's a pi- there's a pipeline that they can provide to college and say like hey new guys they're gonna start here work their way up and they can make it to the nfl right um and have them be full time so that when they're in the off season, all they're doing is looking at uh, tape and what, what you know. 
the, this call, why was it wrong to make this call, uh, or why did we miss this call? I mean, if they have uh, something like that, I'd sign up to be a to be a riff. Um, Willie Doc, <laughs> appreciate you following. Willie. He says, um, he says, hey, P for being chat. We'll catch you on the replay. Thank you. He says, thanks for the great work. Now I am on uh, the trade back bandwagon for Latu. I hear you on that yeah. trade back bandwagon. Um, speaking of, let's see, Dre Murphy says, um, uh, JR, well, if that's the case, then they need to go back and give that ref a fine and call him uh, pass interference on Grady, uh, on Tom freaking Brady. Yeah, no, like we need to get that kind of stuff right. Like it's not that hard. You know, um, let's see get some of these other comments. Uh, oh, he says we need quarterback chaos. Yeah, that would be fun. We'll get into that here in just a minute. Um, yeah. so let's get into the, some of the, the comments from the, uh, talking to the media availability. This is the first time since the combine that we've heard from, uh, you know, from Terry and from, Raheem. So after like the majority of like free agency, you know, so let's, let's, um, let's see one of the comments that, uh, okay. So they're talking about, you know, Kirk cousins, they were asked about the tampering. This is the first time they've kind of publicly acknowledged it in a sense that they're being investigated. And from Arthur to Terry, to everybody, you know, all may say, Hey, we can't really talk about it, but we feel like our, you know, that we didn't do anything wrong. So obviously that's what they're going to say, but the fact that they did more than just say it's an ongoing investigation and we can't talk about it, you yeah. know, that, that kind of makes me feel a little bit, a little bit better. We'll see how it all boils out. Um, Raheem was talk, uh, was asked about, you know, Kyle Pitts and he called him the mayor of Atlanta. <laughs> So I thought that yeah. was kind of uh, yeah. interesting. Um, did you see the comment about them having conversations with Calais Campbell? I uh, thought that was kind of interesting. I did not. So he says, uh, one of the, this is from Tori McElhaney's, uh article that she has written up on the uh, website. So I'll just go ahead and post that up. So make sure all credit is given. Well, I say, uh, add to stage. Thank you. So, says uh one of Falcons most obvious needs is after acquiring quarterback was uh, is practically coming off the edge so it made sense that Clayus Campbell's name came up in conversations in the owners meeting Campbell's one of the most effective pass rushers for the Falcons tying Bud Dupree with six and a half sacks uh Morris said that Cam that he and Campbell had spoken particularly about the longtime veterans future in Atlanta uh, though Morris said he wanted to keep the conversation private, he was willing to say that there's a vision in place if Campbell would like to remain with the Falcons. So I thought that that was an interesting part to that. Yeah, so you know, if he wants to be here, they have a plan you know, to bring him back. Um, he says he also follows up and says, I look forward to getting a chance to sitting in front of him because he's impressive as it gets when it comes to football character. And he's impressive of the careers you can have. That's stuff that you would like that he still brings to the game to us moving forward. And I look forward to discussing that in detail with him at a later date. And so it doesn't sound like the door is closed on Calais at all. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Which I, I, I'm happy to hear, uh, you know, whether or not he actually comes back or not, who knows. Uh, but I, I would love to have him back. Um, because for one, he he's a he's an ad on the the to the pass rush right he's an add to run defense uh the guy's a, a leader uh a vet that a lot of you know young guys can can look up to and uh emulate and all those things uh just would really like to have him back again again if he's willing to come back uh whether it's to the falcons or anybody else who knows uh but yeah we'll find yeah, out i mean if he wants to come back like gabriel's over here saying man that man's 40 let him retire <laughs> If he, if he wants to, to retire, hey, look, go. if he wants to come back, six and a half sna sacks, snacks, six and a half snacks last year. Yep. Uh, there's nothing to sneeze at, per se. I mean, I, he, he's got nothing on me. I get like six and a half snacks in like a, a day or two. There it is. Uh, they're also stated that, you know, that they're probably going to add like a young corner 
of Raheem Morris's statements there. I'm trying to see if I can find Daniel. Oh, I, I just saw one here. Uh, Daniel Flick had those earlier today. So let's – the kid, Daniel Flick. Well, well, he said Raheem Morris says Falcons will add young corners, calls it an area of need. Right. Um, you know, uh, when talking about, uh, uh, you know, he said, you know, as far as the pass rush goes, whether it be with a vet or a rookie, that will be addressed. I, I saw uh, saw one where he was like, as long as – essentially, this is a, a, a paraphrase, but essentially it's like, as long as I'm head coach here, there will never not be a time that I will, I'm looking to add to that. Right, exactly. When it comes to the pass rush. Right, and, and as he should be, especially like – here in Atlanta, so to speak. Yeah. Fred Butts, we appreciate your $2. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Butts. We're going to get DN first after hearing Raheem speak. I, If I had to call it right now, I would say your first round draft pick is either a corner or a defensive end. Yep. Um, and I, I don't think that that's too much of a, a stretch, really. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm trying so, to see. So, you- uh, now the other thing that he did talk about, uh, you know, he mentioned obviously didn't commit to, uh, you know, the draft as far as QBs go. They say we have to go back and reevaluate these uh, those guys for the draft again because our situation has changed. Right. So you know they're they're probably going to talk about you know probably looking more so at if they do pick up a quarterback, it's like second, third, fourth round. Is that a Penix? Is that a Ritter or not Ritter? A Rattler? Uh, right. You know, it's whoever uh, else. It's you know they specifically said to come in and compete with Heineke for the backup job. <laughs> yeah. So it doesn't sound like Heineke is a lock to be QB two. Um, he probably has an inside path with you know Ken Ken Zampezi being on staff, but he's not guaranteed that position. Because yep. one thing you got to keep in mind. As it stands right now, we got like three million in cap space, and it's going to cost about twelve to sign the cap uh, to sign your draft class. Is what I was reading. Um, that seems is, high. Yeah, I, I thought so too. Man, I thought so. I'm glad. Okay, I am glad you said that because when I read that, I was like, Did I, I want to say like, miss like, something. I thought it was six. It's, it's anywhere between like five and seven uh, is what I've seen in the past generally. Let's see. Um, Unless there's been some hike in the rookie pay scale due to well, that's what I'm trying in, to figure out. Um, yeah, due due to the rise in the um, uh, salary cap, right? Cost to let's see if I can figure this out. Okay, according to over the cap. They're saying the rookie pool, right? Mm-hmm. And they have the Falcons listed at. This is where that number is coming from. I don't know exactly how they're like calculating it, but the rookie, the cap pool, because of the value at eight, the value at forty three, and so on, uh, is twelve point two million. So they're going to have mm-hmm. to pick up ten million dollars at minimum, and that's just to sign the uh draft class so hey, i'm not i'm not worried about it because i don't no. think that they, i don't think they would let themselves get into a position where they're like well crap now we can't right. sign all of our rookies no. you know or something along those lines i don't think they would be uh like there's there has to be a plan some of that might be like post june 1st stuff because you gotta remember i uh, like just you know a lot of these guys don't get signed until like july august oh yeah yeah until like right before like training summer, camp. Uh, yeah, training camp starts as far as the rookies it's not something that they gotta do right now and i guess while we're on it we can just look at this real quick let's go to uh teams falcons because i know they got a calculator and a million pop-ups if you've ever used <laughs> uh what you call it man they got Man, you need to, you, I'm telling you right now. You I know, I've got one. It. I've I've got a whole browser. I just don't have it pulled up. I still have Google as my default. Okay. Adblock, man. Get that stuff. I know, I know. Anyway, that's how these folks make their money. I don't pay for them, so I'm just trying not to gripe. Okay, here we go. If you were to cut 
say you bring in a guy, you know, a, a fourth, a Penix or a Rattler, and you cut uh, Heineke. That brings you up to eight just by cutting him. Well, that's right? that's pre that's pre June first cut. Right. So, yeah, they didn't give him me post June. So, okay. pre June, and then, so maybe Lorenzo Carter. Like, if you get a handful of young guys, or you bring in somebody else, maybe there's like you cut I'm Lorenzo not- and Heineke. There's your draft, but that leaves you with nothing after that. Yeah. So, I would think you know. Maybe a Mike Hughes, that would get you 15. Uh, AD uh, Ogundeji, would you want to keep Ogundeji around? He's kind of fallen off a little bit or not really developed. That puts you at 18. And so, okay, so, but then, but we're not also looking at like restructures for, no, no, for uh, yeah, guys, like I'm, yeah. I'm not not looking at that either like i'm just trying to look at guys that you could easily get rid of um and so like you could do a restructure and well they're gonna make me so it's just gonna restructure the base you restructure jake you're up to 28 yeah you restructure grady because you don't want to get rid of him you're up to 35 you restructure, I undo that. Restructure Chris. These are all the max. You're up to 44. Yeah. So they've got break glass in case of emergency, you know, for whatever it is. And if I, and if I was going to, if I was going to restructure, so uh, like maybe Jared, maybe not Matthews. But uh, but maybe you leave him there. But like uh, Jesse Jesse Bates. Okay, yeah. So uh, because, some guys that are going to be on your team for the next three or four years anyway. Yes. So if you were to restructure him, submit, restructure, you're at forty three. Yep. So say you don't want to restructure uh, Matt, but you restructure Grady, Chris, and Jesse. Okay, so AJ Terrell. It, let's say we were to get him a a new contract. Um, so I don't know how to, I don't know what it would be or prorated, not prorated. Just do, uh, uh, what does Sneed get? Like 19. All right, let's just do 15 or let's do, let's do 17. Oh, that's a three. How's that? There, 17. That look right. All right. Yeah. Uh, uh, let's say how many years? Uh, oh, uh, you got to add the years. There you oh, go. Son of a gun. This is getting complicated. <laughs> do, do it. Uh, cause you'd probably do four years. Let's try four years. Okay. Base salary, 17 million each time. Uh, well, so base salary for 2024, we're going to want to bring down, All right. um, all right. Uh, and yeah, so that there you would do like uh prorated bonuses and things like that. To uh, so just cancel this because we'll, we'll have to play around with this, <laughs> but 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 we'll make a base salary. Bam, we made a base you, salary because, of one yeah, million dollars so, this so, year. So, there. what we gotta what we gotta look at is let's say that we do <laughs> give him let's say we do give him 17 million his average over the the, the life of this uh new contract, right? New money right. is. 17 or let's say 16 million a year okay right. we, t- we want to do say a four-year extension so uh that would uh you know wrap up 2024 into it give you another four years past that uh you would take this year's salary and basically like mm-hmm. drop it down to like a million dollars right right uh and that'll save you 11 this year uh, you give him, uh, and then you take however much le- is left on the overall number that we wanted to hit, and we figure out what's the best way to structure that so that, you know, maybe next year his rate goes up a little bit higher, uh, the, and then the year after that it, it goes up even higher, and then right. that third year uh, or the fourth year is when it's like it goes back down 
uh, or gets to the point where you can walk away from it. A, you, you can walk away from it with the least but amount it, of hits. What possible. we were trying to get at before we got off into the weeds there was yeah, we got Tangent we got, City there. Yeah, yeah, we got we got Tangent City big time. Uh, was like they, they have options. Like they're obviously yes. not going to just stick it. I expect other things to be done. Um, Tony Wright's got a good question for us. Is J.R. Jonathan said if Minnesota calls Atlanta and offers them their first round pick at twelve, which I think they have eleven, but uh, uh, maybe it's twelve, um, and their second first rounder at twenty three for our overall for our eight overall, and uh, they want J.J. McCarthy. Your thoughts on that move? I do I would, that all day, every day. Yeah, I would take both of the first rounders, and just for craps and giggles, like. I'd probably, I don't know. I'd have to look at the trade chart value or whatever, but you know, if they'd be willing to throw in like another, like a late round, like a fourth or a fifth, maybe next year. Sure. Yeah. You know, but if we could come away with 11 and 23 this year, 12 and 23 this year. Yeah. I'd give them eight all day long. Especially Uh, if it is 11. uh, Because again, I think by the time we get to eight, there's a very good chance all three of the pass rushers that we believe are the top of the board uh, will be there. If if we drop back to 11, we guarantee we get another first round pick, and we guarantee ourselves to get at least one of the three of the best pass rushers in this draft. All right. Well, let's uh, let's play. Let's see if we can play out this scenario uh, real quick as we go to start to wrap the show up. Uh, I have ad blockers on, so y'all don't have to worry about that. Woo-hoo! All right. All right. So here we go. We're going to see what we're offered. Okay. The Bengals, 8 97 Washington, 36 40, 67 Nope. They can get bent. Minnesota. In this particular one, they're offering 11 and 25 from uh, 25's first round pick. Ooh. So is that enough of a offer? So, yeah, Chris was saying it's 11 and 23. So in this scenario, they're offering us 11 and next year's first. Is that enough for you? Or would you rather 18, 49, and 97 this year? So I think I would take, okay, if I'm the Falcons, I probably do take that. Uh, pick from or take the the trade for Minnesota, uh, simply because then what you're looking at is let's say that we do just enough to get in the playoffs, so we're still kind of in the middle of the pack. But maybe Minnesota, even with JJ McCarthy and what have you, maybe they they just all like a lot of the stuff that happened this year and at last couple of years where they've been really good in like tight games. Uh, kind of just flips it on its head again, uh, right. you know, like we everybody's been expecting. And now they they're still in all those tight games, but not not as many of them. Uh, the right. ball bounced their way. So then we look at possibly an earlier pick in next year's draft, along with our mid round pick, uh, and that gives us uh, the option to then go look for if we feel like we need wide receiver, if we need another pass or, rush, yeah, pass another rush O-line like yep. uh, to go behind Jake Matthews, then I think that gives us a lot more freedom next year to do whatever we need to do. Or and it also gives us, if we feel like uh, we're, we're in the mid rounds and it gives us more ammo to try to move up in the draft, to try to go and get a quarterback if we, uh, of the future, if we feel mm. like we need to. So let's take so, this one. And who did, uh, okay. Not doing any more. So who did they end up taking with our pick? Uh, number eight, they Jake took Daniels. Jaden Daniels. Okay. Well, it's because this one they had JJ going third. Yep. Okay, yep. so now we're sitting here. You got Dallas Turner and Latu and all three of them. So let's for sake of argument this time, let's go Latu. I think a lot of the uh, – Yeah, I, like, the, I, I well, really we'll want go Latu. Latu. So we'll we'll go Latu and say that that's more of a so second round pick I ain't worried about it go away all right now you got you could get crafty Michael Penix went to uh, Denver yep but you got Bo Nix Joe Morgan is an offensive tackle Tyler Newman is safety Devondre Sweat the defensive tackle 
uh, Osa Center and Frazier. Uh, you could get Cooper Beebe, uh, which is another guard. Uh, what about cornerback? Rakeshaw okay. is the first. Yeah. Enos uh, Rakeshaw. Rakestraw is the first corner. Uh, I, I personally would hold off on the corner right now. Uh, for yeah, one, you might be so able to catch one with this guy, Ronaldo Green, Kalen King, some of those guys. Yep. Uh, so let's see. DT, you got big guy. Yep. Um, Nathan Nathan's saying take the corner. Your buddy Brandon Brandon Fisk is still there. Yeah, but he but he's that's a little rich for four. Yeah, a little rich on that one. There's some good D tackles like um uh, Mason Smith. You could like bet on him coming back from an injury. Like he's a freak. Um Dwayne Carter and Makai Wingo. Like we can get some defensive tackles. It doesn't have to be Devondre Sweat. So, um, what do you think? Well, uh, uh, Dre, Dre's like, it's too freaking early to take him. You can probably get him in the second or third round. We're in the second round. Yeah, we're, we're in the second. We're in the second. <laughs> Dre, Dre, we, we are in the second round. We are at our pick in the second. So I'll tell, okay, so we'll see if if Tavondre is there in the third. I think that's I, we definitely take him there. Or if he's there and Braden Fisk is there, that'd be a tough one. But All right, um, so let's go with a corner. Let's grab Rakeshaw, maybe. Uh, oh, he just doesn't blow me away at, here at forty three. Really, I know that Overall, is just not... like your value is sweat. Uh, he said. Huh. My bad. <laughs> <laughs> and Glenn says I would go sweat for sure. All right, let's I mean, go sweat. Uh, one of my one of my first mock drafts had me taking. Uh, I think it was either Dallas Turner or Jared Verse in, uh, in the first round. And uh, the second round, I took Tavondre Sweat. I think I've done that in like two or three mock drafts right, because we're going, I really like sweat. Yeah, all right, we're going. We're going to sweat. We'll we'll add the beef in the middle. All right, now we got. Peyton Willis, Jonathan, I ain't going to, here's Brandon Fisk. We could get Roman Wilson. Uh, add on to the edge with Brandon Dorless. Um, oh, so let's see. What, uh, ooh, uh, I, if I'm going edge here, I'm, yeah. If if I go, if I'm double ditching, d- double ditching, double if ditching. I'm, uh, yeah, if I'm double dipping on edge, uh, I'm probably picking up Nealon. The cornerback is Chris Ambrus Durain. Uh, this 85, a little rich for right here. So I really well, like but, Ron Wilson. Well, well, so we got another pick coming up in like five, you know, four or five picks. Yeah. So we could grab. All right. So do we want Ron Wilson? Do we want Marshawn Nealon? What are other, what are the other wide receivers right now? Cause I wouldn't mind taking this, a receiver here. Roman Wilson, Jalen McMillan, who's interesting. Johnny Wilson, Jermaine Burton, uh, Malachi Washington. It kind of drops off after Roman Wilson, to be honest. Um, what about Jalen McMillan? Jalen McMillan. He's not. He's not bad. McMillan is a. Uh, he's Washington. Um, uh, let's see. He's uh, is a move the sticks. Yeah, he's a move the sticks kind of guy. He was the third wide receiver on that Washington's team. Uh, okay. So, uh, if I'm going anybody here, I'm going Roman Wilson. Uh, uh, Glenn, Glenn, Glenn Revis is like, what about uh, Wilson linebacker here? Uh, let's see where, where I just saw him. I go, I go down. There it is, Peyton Wilson. So, he's the guy who was like stupidly athletic at the combine. Um, twitched up is what you know. Uh, but he's dealt with some injuries, but he's like a sideline to sideline speed guy. So he's alert coverage linebacker. What did I say? With, with a great, a great blind, blind spot, blind spot IQ, spatial awareness, and hip leverage. I wouldn't be against it. Uh, King says we need a we need a cornerback, which we can grab one. 
at 79 for sure. So, I mean, Peyton, Peyton Wilson does give us some positional value. We're at 74. They got him rated 65. So, you want to go um, linebacker? I, I feel like we need a wide receiver. I, I feel like, like, I feel like we need uh, some a guy who could potentially be, you know, if if Mooney doesn't turn out to be the number two, we need a guy that could potentially be the number two. Right. Uh, and I'm thinking the is I think he's Michigan. Yeah, the uh, Michigan guy. He's Roman, Roman Wilson. Wilson. All right, let's go Roman Wilson. We'll see if Peyton Willis is still there. Uh, he is. So, do we want to go linebacker? Do we want to go center at Cedric Ram Van Pran? Or do we want to look oh. at corner? You got Chris Embrace, the kid out of Missouri, and Kalen King. We might be able to pick up next round if we wanted to go yep. to corner there. Um, come on, chat. What y'all? What y'all think? What's Byron. Going on? Uh, he was asking because uh, Dre had forgotten Byron Murphy's name. Which is oh. the one made for Trevon? He's going in the first round. Uh, let's see. I think we can get one of these corners in the next round. So maybe. So yeah, let, go ahead and uh, hit him. Yeah, we'll go with. I haven't done. I haven't mocked him yet. So all right, here we go. We're going to go corner here for sure. So we got Kyrie Jackson, Cam Hart. Cam Hart's pretty good. And what size is Cam Hart? Cam Hart is 6'3, 202. Ooh. Big, big corner. Big corner. Ooh. Um, yeah, <laughs> Nathan, I, I, Nathan Floyd says Cam Hart. <laughs> yep. yep. That's, yeah, I, I think I'm right. thinking you don't, you don't run across very many 6'3, 200 plus pound with yeah. that kind of athleticism. At the All right. So, our, our four round, our quick four round mock here, we got a lot to heavy defense. on defense. Yes, uh, <laughs> La, yeah, the complete opposite of um, the free agency, free agency period. Uh, La two to begin with, followed up by Trevante Sweat, sprinkled a little bit of speed and uh, separation in there with Roman Wilson, added some more freak athleticism to linebacking core with Peyton Wilson, and uh, added a potential running mate in the secondary in Cam Hart. And we also picked up a first-round uh, pick for next year. In the process. Yep. Yep. Now, next week, we're going to take a little bit more time. We kind of blitzkrieg that one because we're, you know, coming up at the end of the show. But yep. next week, we're going to do a more, like, uh, in-depth mock. We're going to have possibly uh, one half of Out of Your Falcon Mind joining us and John Yates and maybe another guest, depending. We'll see how that goes. I don't want to, I don't want to tip my hand there. Oh, I made you all little. Don't do that. <laughs> I don't need to be a little. So, uh, but yeah, I think that turned out pretty, pretty good. Yeah. We can uh, hit this real quick. Don't, this is a good reminder of don't really buy into everything you read. Cause right before the show started, uh, the news broke that CPA 84 followed Arthur Smith out to Pittsburgh along yeah. with, uh, we didn't really touch on it, but along with Van Jefferson. So for all these people that uh, were all like, even CP was out on Arthur, obviously not too much yeah. because he went and took his typical $3 million a year deal. Uh, he signed a two year, $6 million deal out there at Pittsburgh and uh, to go with the only OC that has used them like properly in a sense. Yeah. So, much. I, I kind of thought that was funny, like just <laughs> another narrative that gets uh that gets smashed in a sense. As King Seven said, hit the like button, people. Come on Heck now. Yeah. Well, as we as we have said before, uh, you know, tell a friend to tell a friend. Yeah. Uh, because we would like this thing to continue to grow. We have a uh, good showing here on a weekly basis, and we would love to for it to get even better. But I think that's pretty much going to do it for us today, bro, unless you got something else. Uh, oh, we can know. start talking about this, I guess. Start. Teasing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So 
what we're going to do, a lot of times we spend so much focus on the big names, the first round guys, the second round guys, uh, to where by the time the draft rolls around, like we know these guys real well. So what me and Jonathan are going to do the next few weeks uh, on Fridays, Friday, Saturday, depending on when we can record, uh, we're going to start up a series called The Best of the Rest, uh, where we try to highlight uh, some of the guys who are deeper in the draft pool that could still be contributors that you may not have heard of. Uh, and so hopefully y'all join us for that when when those recordings come out. Uh, we'll and we're do not that. Uh, unlike last year, like, so like last year we, uh, we did, you know, and you know, maybe we'll, it'll end up being something similar to this, but last year we very specifically were like this week, we're going to talk about these guys, you know, this, oh, yeah. uh, defensive line and then edge and then this and that, uh, each week we may get some, uh, some of this, you know, similar guys that we're looking at, but I don't think we, like we as long as we're not talking about the same guys week in and week out. So this will be a little bit more free form, like whatever we want to bring to it. Um, yeah, just want to try to have a little fun looking at some of the the guys deeper down the, which it can be kind of tough to find those guys. So Chris says, I do enjoy me some day three guys. Then that's it. It's like, it's the day three guys that have, you know, caught our attention. It's the, it's the day two, day three guys. Uh, the ones that have caught our attention. Uh, and, you know, that, the day, that the day we think, the, the day three guys, yeah, they may not have the, the same splashy impact as the day one or, or day two guys, but the, the day three guys are the guys that really make your team. Yeah. Uh, I mean, look, if you can... don't, if you don't land some guys there to at least be contributors, they don't have to be the stars. They don't have to be a Grady Jarrett or what have you, but they need to be able to contribute to the team and not be a hindrance. And if you hit the, in that spot with those kinds of guys on a consistent basis, your team's going to be pretty good. That's it. And then we're going to try to find some of those guys. Yep. So uh, we appreciate y'all, as always. Absolutely. We appreciate y'all hanging out with us for the, the hour or so that we do this every week. Um, keep your eye on the channel as we just laid out what's coming up. Uh, as always, we could be having guests on. I try every week to – to get people who I think y'all might be interested in hearing from on just or, like Terry Fontenot, No, he's trying dudes, but sometimes it just doesn't hey, work out. Sometimes it just don't work out. You know, you try <laughs> Some folks just don't answer back. You know, yep. uh, we ain't big, big time enough. Maybe if y'all will tell a friend to tell a friend, uh, yeah, that yeah. we can then get big enough to attract some bigger names. Uh, yeah. Anyway, we appreciate y'all as always. All jokes aside, we wouldn't be doing this if y'all didn't show up. Uh, oh, as and, always, uh, oh, just, just one one last thing, and then we'll yeah. get out of here. Uh, uh, we we are still planning. You know, I know this has been asked. I think we've actually said this before as well, but we we are still planning. Unless something dramatic changes, uh, we are still planning uh, draft night yep. to to stream the entire night. Yep. Uh, you we'll know, be live first the- round the first round uh definitely live the first round probably live the second round the second third round as well uh yeah. and i'm gonna like like i said i'm gonna start trying to line up you know guests and people to stop by and chat with us while we're doing that but yeah we'll definitely be doing that this year unless something maybe maybe happens. do maybe do day three which it might be just a me thing uh but we'll see, we'll see that it or it could be what I've, what we've done in the past is when as soon as it's over with on day three, we go live and recap the the whole thing. So, yep. all right, we appreciate y'all as always. Y'all can follow me on Twitter. I'm at Grim eleven twenty eight, G R I N M one one two eight. At Jonathan M Holder, come by say hi. That's it. As always, Falcons fans, rise up. <laughs>